he succeeds me as Duke of Cornwall. I want also to express my love for Harry and Meghan as they continue to build their lives overseas. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Exposing SMG. My, oh my, so much has happened, and I'm here to discuss it with all of you. I apologize for the lack of posting, we ran into some technical difficulties, but we are going to catch up on everything we missed out on, and if there is something that wasn't discussed in this video, I promise you that it will be discussed in the next. We're doing a whole series right now on Meghan and Harry and the royal family. So comment down below any other videos you want to see about all the drama that's going on. And now, let's begin. First of all, the Queen has passed away. Her 70 years and 214 days reign was the longest of any British monarch and the second longest recorded of any monarch of a sovereign country. We all knew it was coming, but it's still a shock to everyone. I'm not going to talk about the Queen, her legacy, or anything of that sort because that's not the channel for it. I'm going to talk about what you're all here to listen to, the drama and the events that followed the death of Her Majesty. You guys already know how we are going to talk about Meghan and Harry and the mess with them being back in the UK to pay their respects, and I'll also run through any other essential details that I found to be of interest for you guys. Now here we have the last photo of Queen Elizabeth II, it was taken when she welcomed the new Prime Minister of the UK, Liz Truss. The day that the Queen passed, everyone was kind of on edge due to what the palace released in the morning. They released an official statement saying that the Queen will be resting and remaining comfortable at Balmoral because doctors are concerned for Her Majesty, and that was the line that made everyone go crazy because it meant that she was not leaving and she was not going to the hospital. On top of that, an official statement said that at the time, Prince Charles, Camilla, and Prince William have all traveled to Balmoral. Where are Harry and Meghan at this time? They were also in the UK because they were scheduled to appear at the Well Child Awards. Harry was also supposed to give a speech, but as we now know, both he and Meghan missed the awards as Harry rushed to Balmoral. The Well Child Awards ceremony went on without them. He rushed to Scotland to join other members of the royal family at Balmoral, where the Queen died peacefully that afternoon. However, flight data shows that Harry's jet was still in the air at the time, not touching down at the airport until nearly 15 minutes later. So everyone was like, oh no, he missed the passing of his grandma. He made the journey without Meghan, although it was initially reported that she was joining him in Scotland. At the moment the Queen passed, Prince Charles became King Charles III. Prince William then inherited the dukedom that belonged to Charles, making him and Kate the Duke and Duchess of Cornwall and Cambridge. In King Charles III's first speech, he made Camilla his queen consort and Prince William as the Prince of Wales. So what did Meghan and Harry inherit? Well, titles were a big part of the shebang that Meghan caused on Oprah, claiming racism was the reason why Archie didn't have a title, but as we all know, Meghan isn't that bright and I already talked about that in my Lies on Oprah videos, so go check them out. Here's the truth. Harry and Meghan's two children are now eligible to claim the titles of prince and princess due to a decree issued by King George V in 1917, but it's not that simple and there are many layers to the situation. Questions remain as to whether the titles will actually be changing, while the website of the royal family has already been updated to reflect other royal family members' new titles. Archie and Lilibet are still listed as Master and Miss Mountbatten Windsor. Now I am posting an entire video about this exact situation dedicated to the titles and the whole process, so be sure to be on the lookout for that. You do not want to miss that video, I'm going real in depth since Meghan and Harry want to run their PR narrative for years now and people are calling racism and all of that stuff, we're gonna get to it. But the point of the story is right now is that the titles aren't automatic and no, Meghan isn't a princess. Meghan once brought up the fact that Kate and William's kids have the prince and princess titles, but Prince George has always been an exception to the rules outlined in the 1917 decree because as a direct successor to the British throne, he has always been styled as a prince since birth. And again, I will be talking about all of that, including Meghan and Kate's fights over the titles. And ever since the Queen's death, Wikipedia has been edited multiple times to reflect prince and princess titles for Archie and Lilibet, with some pointing out that it's Meghan's PR reps added again. But like I said, I will be posting a whole video, so I'm not going to get into that now. 
Now, other drama that occurred after the Queen's passing was King Charles facing backlash for the way he supposedly acted at the Council of Accession. He was criticized for not clearing up his desk and motioning for someone else to clear it up for him. Those in his defense have said that no time has passed since his mother passed away and he's already been thrown in the spotlight and role of king and he's under a lot of stress. What do you guys think? He's also been facing backlash for this clip right here where he was really upset about the pen spilling all over him and Camilla was just like, oh yeah, and everyone was like, oh sir, what's going on? Like, it's, he seems to be under a lot of stress, but other people are saying like, this is the person who's going to lead the country. So leave me your thoughts about that in the comments down below. And what do you think public opinion is going to be of Charles? Do you think he's going to be liked or not? Let me know. Now let's get to the interesting parts. The return of the Fab Four as they pay their respects to the Queen and greet the crowd. William and Kate made their first public appearance as Prince and Princess of Wales on September 10 in Windsor. They were joined outside the castle by Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, though the pairs barely interacted. Body language experts claimed that William looked like the leader and an instigator as Harry looked more anxious. Body language expert Judy James told Female, This is a phenomenal and unexpected scene that displays some natural caution and awkwardness in the body language. Although as a statement of intent, it seems choreographed as something of a loving tribute to the Queen and in some ways the new King, who took what was maybe the first step in speaking of his love for Harry and Meghan in his recent speech. The four lined up together to suggest some form of unity and it is William with his puffed chest and air of confidence who looks like the leader and instigator. Harry performs some clothing touch anxiety rituals but Meghan seems to be on hand to offer comfort, support and encouragement. Even though they walked along the gates of Windsor Castle together, they still appear to maintain a significant distance from each other. They only seem to come together briefly at the start and end of the engagement when they appear to enter and exit the same vehicle with one another. Throughout the rest of the walkabout, the four barely interacted. Catherine seemed to comfort William as Meghan comforted Harry. And a spokesperson for the Prince and Princess of Wales said, The Prince of Wales invited the Duke and Duchess to join him and the Princess of Wales. The Prince of Wales thought it was an important show of unity at an incredibly difficult time for the family. However, William received backlash from some people about this gesture because all the media talked about was the four of them being together again as opposed to the new king. Now we're going to talk about how Meghan acted and the awkwardness at the event, but there is a rumor floating around that supposedly Meghan and Harry wanted to do their own walkabout and do it by themselves, you know, probably for Netflix or whatever, but William wanted to shut that down and make them seem united, especially at this time of grief, and so that's why he invited Harry and Meghan. What do you guys think about that? Let me know. Now let's talk about Meghan. In one video, Meghan appeared weirdly nervous and some even accused her of being on something as she appears flustered in this clip as you can see. She notices that William waves at people so then she turns around almost aggressively but then turns back around and fixes her hair only to wave again. Now I'm not saying aggressively and like she looked angry or anything like that, it kind of just seemed like a jerk reaction and she seemed very confused. On the other hand, Kate, William, and Harry seemed fine. It's not like it was during an emotional moment, but it's Meghan who seems a little off. What do you guys think? Then there was another occasion where Meghan seemed to snap out of royal aid, but she ends up smiling and catching herself as she made contact with the cameras. Let me know what you guys think about this interaction in the comments down below. It seems like Meghan did not want to give the flowers to the royal aide, with some saying she wanted the perfect photoshop of her laying the flowers down, to the point where they sent another royal aide to take the flowers from her since she didn't listen the first time, and you can even see that Harry kind of motions on her back for her to do so and to listen. Now, Meghan in general was criticized for even coming to pay her respects when her entire brand has been shitting on the royal family and playing media games until the Queen's final days. One Twitter user wrote, Meghan Markle's own father nearly died of a stroke and she hasn't even bothered to call or see him. Watching her swan around Windsor shaking hands pretending to be sad after making the Queen's final years a misery is sickening. Another wrote, We don't need a self-serving US actress pretending she's upset about the passing of our Queen. 
hashtag go home Meghan Markle bought all the audacity this year. She legit showed up for this walkabout after the interviews plus half-truths on a podcast to put money in her pocket. Seriously, what's with the tone to someone trying to help? The UK is better than me. Honestly, I don't blame people for being upset that Meghan came. Sure, some may argue that she's paying her respects, but would she have also paid her respects if she wasn't photographed at every chance? I mean, it's obvious that this is huge publicity for her and Harry. It's major. I bet they wouldn't want to miss this. And in the last video I had about Meghan, it was about her podcast episode where she complained about royal work once again and made a story about a nursery fire in South Africa seem bigger than it actually was. So forgive me if I don't buy into her little selfish act during the walkabout. You complained and publicized your hatred for the royal family till the Queen's final days. And even worse, she monetized it. But I always expected her to show her face, especially at this event, because this is bigger than anything Meghan and Harry would ever release. Now let's talk about some photos. In this photo, you can kind of see her forced sympathetic smile towards Kate, who completely ignores her and kind of remains professional throughout the entire event. And during the walkabout, Meghan was all over Harry as per usual, with people noting that she's providing comfort, but, I mean, she's always all over Harry like this, whether at a tragedy or a red carpet event. She's been accused by many of manipulating him by her touch or whatever. A lot of body language experts talk about that. I'm pretty sure you can find a bunch of videos on that. But honestly, I don't know how to explain it, but Megan just seemed ingenuine the whole time. It's like she tried to force emotions. Like, for example, look at this photo of the four of them together. And Megan has this little pout of emotion on, as if she's forcing the waterworks. Meanwhile, if you look at Kate, she's just walking, clearly saddened by the turn of events, but not in a way where she's trying to prove something. Even in this photo, as she looks at the flowers, it's like she's posing for a short while, while Kate and William are just looking down, looking as if they're just focusing on what they're doing, while it appears more posed for Megan. It's like she's trying to force emotion. And call me biased or whatever, but I don't think she was the slightest bit saddened, and she only came for the photo shoot. If she actually cared and was genuine, she wouldn't have spent the Queen's last weeks continuing her agenda of hating on the royal family and crying as if working as a royal was the worst thing on earth. So that's it for this video. That was just a quick recap of the first few days of the Queen's passing. May she rest in peace. Let me know what you guys think of everything and I hope you guys enjoyed my recap. Tell me what you guys want to see in the next coming days. I also have that video on the titles along with more coverage of the funeral and everything. It's all coming. So make sure to leave me your thoughts, follow us on our social media accounts, and like and subscribe for more content. And as always, I'll see you next time.